Good morning, everyone. We're going to have any announcements that we want for the life of the church, and then we'll listen to a little bit more centering music. And today, I'm happy to say that we miss Alan a lot. I'm not happy to say that. I, I'm sad to say that we miss Alan a whole lot. Um, however, multiple people have contributed the gift of music to us today. Um, Reverend Jim Edgerly, who is a resident in this valley when he comes up north and was the person who remembered John Pepper for us here in this church and is a beloved member of the Pepper community and now my uh, colleague and he's come here to visit us when he's in town is playing guitar for us and um, can, it sort of inspired, gave me the courage to try a livelier song than we sometimes do in our service. So for Jim's um, gift of guitar and voice, we are grateful. Robert Carper is singing a solo and my daughter Sarah prepared a solo for us as well. So we actually have a lot of music today as opposed to lack of music today. So I just want to say how much I appreciate that. And next week, when we have a very simple communion service, it's really just going to be scripture and communion and prayer. Maisie Brown will be the pianist for that service. The service will be led by our deacons because I'm going to take a little vacation with my husband. And um, church will be very simple. We're going to live stream only. We're not going to do Zoom. It'll just be live streaming out to the website and Facebook. And um, the sound system will be on, so you'll be able to hear what's happening. But we're going to just keep it really simple for next week. So just to say that um, thank you for all the gifts of music that have come. I believe that Meg has an announcement for the church. So you're going to need the wireless mic, Meg. Thank you. Two announcements. Um, first, people should already know that we're having a plant sale uh, the 21st of May. Um, always very popular, so come early. But any of you gardeners who are beginning to hope that your gardens will be coming up soon, um, there are lots of pots under the steps uh, beside the parish house. So there are many pots for you to take if you need them. And my second announcement will be visible to the people here in the sanctuary. I finally was able to connect with my friends from Honduras Hope, who went back to Honduras in February after a two year lapse with, because of COVID. And I was able to get 10 of their gorgeous baskets that the ladies in Plana Grande have made for us. Uh, six of them, no, five of them are spoken for. So there are only five left. If you are interested in purchasing any of those today or giving a donation for them, um, I am happy to talk to you afterwards. If you're not familiar with this, Honduras Hope is one of the organizations that we help to sponsor. And I've traveled to Honduras three times with them. And um, it's fascinating to watch the women learn, learn this old craft from their country that was reintroduced to them about five years ago by the staff at Honduras Hope. So. Anyway, there's a lot of stories with them, but they are, some of them are available today, and you can take your pick. And then I just want to check in Zoom. Are there any other announcements for the life of the community? Jeanette, I'm thinking of the Zimbabwe um, initiative. Um, hmm. The mission committee sent $5,230 which was a combination of the mission funds and donations that individuals provided. And it was sent to them this week for their roof construction project. Haven't heard that they've received the money yet, but it's on its way. Yeah, so that was one of our goals throughout Lent was that people might make contributions to, to match or to add on to what the church had already allocated. And so, we're not covering the whole cost, but we're certainly helping them close the gap on putting that roof on their building. As you know, every year we've been working on this with them. So they have all their trusses and they're taking next steps. So that's awesome. 
Any other announcements for the life of this church? Anything in Zoom, Sandy or Jeanette? Nope, looks good. Beautiful. Um, Chris, would you maybe just play something brief for us to help us center ourselves? And for everybody in Zoom or whether you're here, I would ask that you put your feet on the floor. Close your eyes if you like. Relax your mind. you. So we're doing a combination of live and uh, pre-recorded digital music from our archives in order to move forward with our music in the current environment. Please turn to the call to worship that you'll find either in your bulletin or on your screen. Lord, in your love, you invite us to be your friends. Lord, have mercy. Lord, in your joy, you choose us to go out and bear fruit. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, in your power, you send us to be your faithful witnesses. Lord, have mercy. Holy love, have mercy. And now for our first treat of the day, we're going to do the song he leadeth me if you are here in the sanctuary you'll find the words in the back on the back of your bulletin and we're going to do the first two verses only and if you're on zoom you're going to see it up on the screen you'll have the choice of following along from the actual song sheet or just singing the lyrics He leadeth me, O oh blessed thought, with words of heavenly comfort fraught. Whate'er I do, where'er I be, still please God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me, his faithful follower. Lord, I would clasp my hand in thine, nor ever murmur, nor repine, content what it not lot I see, since tis thy God that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me, his faithful
I'm a little suspicious of one of my microphones, so I'm sticking to the wired ones today. This is the time for the prayers that we lift up together. And um, I'm going to put Bob and Kit on the spot and find out from Kit how Bob is doing in his recovery. Uh, he's doing well. Um, he's up and walking with the walker and um, he's in pain, but it's not as bad as he thought it would be. But it's a full time job taking care of him. <laughs> So for those recovering from surgery and their care providers, <laughs> I'm assuming this is at home now. Is that right, Kit? Yes, he's at home. He came home the day of the surgery. Okay, awesome. Um, and along those lines, Sue Kerrigan had surgery last week, and then she had some complications. So she was home, and Arden had to call for assistance, and we brought an ambulance to her house and took her back to the hospital so that she could be safe for a few more days. She is safe. It was just a combination of the perfect storm of things after the surgery. So uh, she's still in the hospital, and they're going to reassess on Monday or so before they release her again to make sure that she's definitely safe when she goes home this time. Um, and so I, I just want to say gratitude for everybody that was helping Sue as well, and especially for Arden having to be on site and realizing that she needed more support than she, uh, than she had on hand and being there to call for assistance when Sue needed it. Um, Gail? Yes. Um, I spoke to Sue uh, just about an hour ago and um, they will let her go home today if they can get a, a medical person to be on hand with her. They will not let her go home like they did before without um, any, you know, anybody who knows what they're doing medically. All right, so we're waiting on that. I'll either be bringing her home today or I guess tomorrow if it doesn't work for today. Okay, cool. As, as long as she's going home with a qualified medical person to be there with her and keep an eye on things. That was Arden giving us an update. So those are two of our own people that we want to lift up. I want to run through all the other people that we continue to pray for and then ask for you to add your prayers of concern. And from there, we will move to prayers of joy and celebration. We continue to pray for Huntley, for Scamp, for Mary, Sasha's granddaughter, and for Sasha. We pray for Bob and Sue in their recovery. We pay, pray for Jim in his recovery. We pray always for Jan and Barry for the Kellogg family, for Ben and Ron, both of them living with different phases of cancer, Ron particularly in a hospice situation, Richard and Joyce, Richard and Sandra, Arden and Anne, two among us, and there are many more, Alice and, as well, grieving those that they have loved. Um, Kevin from Tennessee asked me to remind all of us that his mother passed. Um, yesterday was the anniversary of her death and his life changed very drastically when she died. Um, we have known him for a long time and he's on a different part of his journey in Tennessee, but he calls me about five times a day and I answer him once every two or three days. And, but I told him to keep calling me so I know he's alive. Uh, no joke. And through Kevin, let us pray for those who are homeless, for those who have mental health challenges, for those he meets on the road and those who live here who struggle with substance use disorder and so many other challenges. Sue's situation in the Ukraine continue to remind us to pray for those who are here in our own valley, who are first responders, as well as those who serve in the military and other branches of the service, both here at home and abroad. And particularly we pray at this time for the Ukraine, for the nations that surround it, for those who have made the ill-advised decision or been called up to serve in a war of aggression that is unjust, 
and for all the nations that have responded all across Europe and here in the United States, all the ways that people have creatively tried to send help to both refugees and to those who have chosen to stay and those who couldn't get out. Um, the Ukraine shines a, lot, a light on situations that are prevalent around the world. It's not the only place where there's conflict or where people are dislocated either within their own nation or in other nations. So let us allow the Ukraine to remind us that this is a condition that happens over and over again in our world and we cannot look away. To these prayers of concern, I invite you to add any that you might bring. Um, and, and we're going to ask that you use the microphone if you're here in the sanctuary. So prayers for Ellen to recover from horrific bicycle accident last week. For Ellen to recover from a horrific bicycle accident last week. Um, any other prayers here in this sanctuary that we want to lift up? And in the Zoom, Sandy or Jeanette, do you see anybody? No. Quiet. I, I have one. Oh, okay. So, so for, um, for my son, Nate, and other friends and family of his fishing buddy, John, uh, Nate witnessed John's drowning a couple weeks ago. So for all, he and uh, his friend Kevin witnessed it. So for, John, for the loss of the life of a good friend, John, and for Nate and his friend who witnessed this death, uh, you know, sometimes events leave us speechless because we wish we could change the course of events and we cannot. And we reach for love even in these times and seek it, seek whatever solace, whatever comfort. And it may take a while to know that it is there. Sometimes it can be a while in the grief and the sorrow before you can find a place of comfort. But the life of John is sacred and it may be too short but his friends will uphold in the light the gifts that they received from having known him. Thank you, Claire. Any other prayers in Zoom? No. We balance our grief, our fear, our anger with our hope with our laughter and our joy. And so amidst these heavy prayers that we share with each other so that they're not so hard to hold, we ask for each other to remind each other what gives us hope and joy. Uh, Maureen shared with us this week videos of the very healthy black bear mama who's been visiting their house with her cubs and her husband Ken said this this lady bear looks so good she looks like she just came out of the Debony salon because she's so glossy and fit and the biggest mother bear I think most of us have ever seen and I haven't seen her in person you guys have seen her in person so just life is around us and it is moving are there other prayers of celebration or joy here in the sanctuary that you want to share? Is there anybody that has a moment of gratitude or appreciation that you would like to share in Zoom? I will. I'm grateful for spring. Everything's budding here in Ohio and um, it's very warm. Um, and so um, very thankful for those signs that warmer weather is on its way to stay for a little while. Yeah, do you wanna say how warm it is again, Sandy? I don't know if anybody wants to hear it. It's 80, it'll be 85 today. <laughs> And thankful that I could get out and kayak yesterday. It was also 85 and it, it was beautiful. 
Kayaking. Okay, so it's like, if we're lucky, it's in the 40s right now here, I think. It's not snowing this weekend, so that's a... Anybody else in Zoom that's happy? Yeah. Go ahead. So it's, it's Ginger. It says David's phone, but um, so I'm in North Carolina um, taking care of baby Jack while Cassandra's TDY, which means temporary duty for three weeks. Um, right now, though, um, Derek has baby Jack, but I've got Lakota. <laughs> I don't know if you can see her. So we're we're walking <laughs> and just grateful to be able to do those things. I know you love Lakota. She brings <laughs> up there with your family. Yes. And she's very, she's a very mischievous dog. So the minute they leave the house or she thinks they've left the house, she goes upstairs and makes messes in all the wrong places. <laughs> and she's 15, right? Yeah, I think, yeah, about that. Yeah. <laughs> she's a matriarch. She knows exactly what she's doing, but she pretends right. she's innocent. Yeah. They've got her number though. Yep. <laughs> Are there any other prayers of gratitude or laughter in Zoom? Well, let me just say again, prayers of gratitude, both for the music that has been offered us over the course of the past few years and the new music that comes to us today and how the God of surprises finds new ways to bring us together and remind us that there are so many ways to worship and to experience God's sacred presence in our creativity. Please pray with me, O oh, holy God. You hear your children's voices. And for the next few weeks, we will think about some of the voices of the people that first followed you, that met you when you were alive, who witnessed post-resurrection visits, and then told their stories so that these stories have become ones that we share even now. And we explore how the stories of 2000 years ago have meaning for us even now. And we hear it in the way we pray to you, in the sacredness of life that has gone ahead, sometimes with understanding and sometimes suddenly and unexpectedly and in the lives that continue to flourish here in this world in so many different ways. And in the ways that we also are holding up those who are in pain and in need of your healing and your hope in places that are incredibly dangerous and risky. We give thanks for where love comes because it meets us everywhere. We offer you our silence. And then we pray together those words that you first taught us. And if you are in Zoom, you'll see the words on your screen. You can find them in your bulletin if you need them. If you're in Zoom, feel free to unmute so that all of us can pray together. Our Father, Lord who art in heaven, in heaven. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, be done. on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive, bread. And forgive and us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As an additional meditation, Bob Carper will now share with us a solo in the garden.
I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear falling on my ear The Son of God discloses And He walks with me And He talks with me And He tells me I am His own And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I'd stay in the garden with him, though the night around me is falling and he bids me go through the voice of woe his voice to me is calling and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever And Elizabeth is going to read for us the scripture this morning. Perfect. <laughs> Luke chapter eight, verses one through three. Some women accompany Jesus. Soon afterwards, he went through the cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. The 12 were with him, as, as well as some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa, and Susanna, and many others, who provided for them out of their resources. Mark chapter 15. Then Jesus gave a cry, a loud cry, and breathed his last. There were also women looking from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger of the Joseph and uh, Salome. These, these used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee, and there were many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. The burial of Jesus. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in the tomb that had been hewn out of rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph saw where the body was laid. Luke chapter 24, 
the resurrection of Jesus. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that had been prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the son of man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the 11 and to the rest and all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, mother of James and the other women who with them who told this to the apostles. Thank you, Elizabeth, for reading. I thought apropos to have a woman's voice as we meet the apostle to the apostles, Mary Magdalene. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We're going to open this morning's reflection by listening to a song that my daughter recorded for us, but I believe you'll recognize it from Jesus Christ Superstar. I don't know how to love him, what to do, how to move him. I've been changed, yes, really changed. In these past few days when I've seen myself, I seem like someone else. I don't know how to take this. I don't see why he moves me. He's a man. He's just a man, and I've had so many men before in very many ways. He's just one more. Should I bring him down? Should I scream and shout? Should I speak of love and let my feelings out?
cry every time I hear her sing. <laughs> I've been listening to that song all week as I've been thinking about Mary Magdalene. And if you listen to the lyrics, you'll know right away that one of the great misconceptions about this woman is embedded in those lyrics. Around 594 CE, so about 1500 years ago, one of our popes, Pope Gregory, read three different texts and put them together and made them into the story of Mary Magdalene as it was taught to us for hundreds of years. One text talked about a sinful woman. One text talked about a woman who anointed Christ with her tears and her ointments. And one talked about Mary Magdalene who had been cured when he helped release seven demons from her. All of these different stories were laid onto Mary Magdalene so that people began to ident identify her as a prostitute who had been redeemed and healed and who had knelt at the feet of Christ and repented for her past. And yet there are non canonical texts, the Gospel of Thomas and the Gospel of Mary, Mary Magdalene, that describe the early life of Christians and talk about how important she was to him, as well as the texts that are part of our biblical tradition. She is the first person in every gospel, whether she's with a group of women or alone, to see the risen Christ and to be told to go and tell others. And depending on which of the stories you read, the women fail because of their fear or they go ahead and they make it to see the men and the men at first don't believe them or two of the disciples run. And yet again, even in that story, Mary is the only one or the first to encounter the risen Christ. We read that text on Easter morning, and today we hear a variant on that story where she's among a group of women. And you hear at least twice in those stories, both in Luke and in Mark, that the women supported the ministry of Christ, that they were women of means, that they had households and the capacity with their resources to support the work that was being done in the world right then. And yet over time, some aspects of their roles were written out of our tradition. Some of them are told to us non-canonically out of the texts that came from the Nag Hammadi. Did I say that right? But the story, whether it's been changed or the story as it might have been, is still powerful because we're still singing Mary's song. She is called the apostle to the apostles by the Catholic Church itself, the first to see God risen, the first to see life overcoming death and walking and talking and changing the world. And she was the one who carried that news to everyone else. I do not doubt that had Mary not been there to see the risen Christ, the risen Christ would have appeared in the world anyway. But it was one who never turned her eyes away from him who saw him first. Along with the stories of Mary seeing Christ and supporting his ministry is the fact that the women watched his death. And as I said last week, and as I have said before, and as I know, because I live the opposite, if you can be with the one that you love when they're dying, you will do anything to be there with them. It will be the most excruciating and the most painful thing you may ever do. But as somebody comes into life, you will be with them on the threshold when they leave it. I didn't get the chance, nor did any member of my family get to be with my daughter when she died. 
But the women of Christ's time stood and stayed and watched his death. And then they went back to honor his body. And it is there that the story begins again. And instead of them holding vigil as he crosses the threshold, he comes to them beyond that threshold and helps them begin to cross a new threshold, a new realization, which is that life returns and life persists and love is always the final word of the story and death cannot overcome it. Love will return and it may not look like what we expect. It will surprise us, but it will keep speaking and it will speak through the fiction and it won't be silenced even when we take the names and the roles off the page. It will find a way and it will sing down through the ages to find a place in our hearts even now. The tradition of Mary Magdalene as a prostitute ended up being a gift. Believe it or not, Amy Jill Levine, the Jewish historian from Vanderbilt, who I've talked about, whose work I've been listening to so much in the last few weeks, talked about the fact that if Mary Magdalene hadn't actually been associated with prostitutes, we might have had a cast of saints that were so unapproachable, none of us would ever think that love could transform us. But from that idea that she'd been a prostitute, even though there's nothing in her life or in the texts that says she was, tradition itself gave her that role. And yet from that beginning, she was venerated so much. Stories layered upon stories that she achieved the rank of sainthood in the Orthodox and the Catholic traditions, which are our, our forebears in the Christian tradition. And it's said that the, at the end of her life, she and others were driven across the sea and landed in a boat in southern France. And that eventually she joined a monastery there and then she retreated to a cave and she was so holy that the angels came down every hour and gave her communion. And that at the very end of her life, she was taken to a cathedral to have one final communion before she went up to heaven. And even to this day, there is a pilgrimage site that has the bones and the relics of Mary Magdalene. And they've even reconstructed her face so we can imagine what she might have looked like. And she was a very striking woman. But the hope that she gave people was that a woman with such humble beginnings, who might even have been incredibly broken in the way that she chose to live. Again, this is a tradition that was laid upon her but her story can actually carry that truth because what it gave people was the sense that love can transform anyone. Even somebody who has had fiction upon fiction laid across them, shame laid upon them, her own words and her own story stripped from the texts. And yet it shines down through the ages. She's the first witness to love. And she witnessed to that love century after century until she brought it to us. This morning, I wanted to show you one more legend of Mary. I'm bringing my phone camera back so the people in Zoom can see this up close. There's a legend that she went and met with Caesar. And at the dinner with Caesar, this will explain the image that's on your bulletin cover. And I'm gonna hold it up. Oops, I want the colorful one. I'm gonna hold it up. I know this is the most crude way to show a graphic, but I think you can all see Mary and she's holding in her hand an egg, a white egg. But guess what? The egg changed. So first she held up a white egg 
for Caesar. And he was unimpressed. But then as she hold, held it there, bearing witness to what she had seen during the life of Christ, it changed color and it became red. Don't worry, I didn't just perform a magic trick. I dyed a red egg. Can you all see the red egg? And apparently this continues to be a tradition in the Eastern Orthodox Church that every Lent right before Easter, they still dye the first egg red and they leave it up somewhere tucked in the home as a blessing for the year. And then at the end of the year, after they've dyed the new set of eggs, they crack open the old red egg and they hold it over a river and they read the remains inside and it tells them what might happen in the year to come. The young woman who told me that story said she would have to have her grandmother read the egg for her because she doesn't have the skills to do it herself. Her grandmother still lives in the Eastern Europe. So even these interesting cultural traditions still live among us. But what really lives in us is what it feels like to hear someone sing the song of Mary Magdalene and be so puzzled by who he is and so changed that she's confused even after he comes back to her beyond death. And she doesn't know how to love him but she does, she loves him. And he is helping her cross a threshold of change. It is comparable to being born, to crossing the threshold of death, but it is the threshold of rebirth when you are changed in ways that can't be undone. When you, alive right now, are transformed by some encounter with love, that leaves its fingerprints on your life forever. And each of you knows maybe over and over again when or how this has happened for you, but there has been a time in your life when love changed everything and it will probably happen again because even when we try to shut ourselves off or we hope that no love is gonna drag us through one more moment of change, it does. This is the gift and the challenge of love. And Mary Magdalene reminds us how we are changed by that love. Now I have to catch up with myself. Thanks be to God. We are going to offer you another song. Reverend Jim Edgerly is going to play the guitar and Bob and I are gonna sing in the chorus. And uh, whether it's on your screen or in your bulletin, you're gonna see the words for the verse, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart. I wanna see you, I wanna see you. If you can pick up that tune and you wanna join us when we do that, you are welcome. We're gonna repeat the verse twice, then we're gonna sing the chorus a couple of times and then we'll repeat the verse again. So um, stay in your seats and join us. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. See you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. So I sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you.
Were you able to hear that in Zoom? Yes. We forgot to turn on the guitar microphone, so if you could hear us, that's good. Thanks, Jim, for that lively song. He sent me a list, and that's the one I picked because I heard Gia Osborne sing it before, and I love it, so yay. We remind you that your giving helps us support the valley. Uh, you gave faithfully through Lent, and we are raising a roof in Zimbabwe. You support the work of Honduras, and here are baskets to show you what it means for the work of people's hands to change their lives. We work weekly with people at the way station and Kevin calls me from Tennessee and shines a light on what it's like to live that life of mental health and homelessness. We take care of people, our neighbors who need a ride to the hospital and need to come home again and be safe. What you offer us flows back out into the valley and we don't do it by ourselves we do it with every other church in this valley and with many other organizations but your support for the work that we do that we feel called to do makes a difference and so we ask for you to continue your faithful giving we will close today with a very familiar song so if you wish to rise we're going to close with the benediction And the words will be on the screen, and Chris is going to play, I think you're going to play the audio for us. Brothers and sisters, go in peace.